Welcome to this section of the course where we're going to talk about rotational kinetic energy and angular momentum. I don't think it would be a huge surprise to you if I told you that uh, if I take an object and I start to rotate it, which is what we've been talking about the last several sections, and it starts to rotate, and it, let's say it's a massive object like, I don't know, let's say it's a car, that that object, even though it's not moving up and down or left and right, it's not moving, that it should possess some sort of kinetic energy just by the fact that it's rotating. I mean, you can convince yourself of that if you try to walk up to a spinning uh, bulldozer in space and try to just grab it. I mean, you're going to be thrown around by that guy. You're not going to be able to stop it without some effort. So it does have some kinetic energy. Just in a similar manner that you had a you know, bowling ball and you should throw it down the road, it's going to have some kinetic energy as well. The only difference is here, the kinetic energy is going to be associated with the rotation. Okay? In a similar manner, we're also going to have what we're going to call angular momentum. Same kind of thing. Uh, whereas before we had the linear momentum of an object that's moving here, if something's rotating, we're also going to say that we have an uh, angular momentum. So let's talk about that. Okay? Recall that for linear momentum, this is for linear momentum, the kinetic energy was just simply equal to one-half times m times v squared. Okay? That's something that you should know from, from before. In the new uh, rotational system, the kinetic energy of rotation, I'm going to denote that with an r, is going to be one-half times i times omega squared. And again, I'm writing it here so that you can see the direct analogy. Uh, in fact, these equations really aren't that much different. I mean, you've got the one half. Here you have mass. Here you have this, um, this moment of inertia, which I already told you is sort of like a measure of the mass distribution of an object. And here, instead of velocity squared, you have angular velocity squared. Okay? So, in general, the conservation of mechanical energy that you already know about is going to be a little bit different, um, or, or a little bit expanded, I should say. Um, so, so now the c conservation of energy more completely will be the kinetic energy of translation of moving left and right plus the kinetic energy of rotation plus the potential energy of a system, okay, in gravity let's say, the initial value of this is going to equal the final value of the kinetic energy of translation plus the kinetic energy of rotation plus the potential energy in a gravitational field. So the, the um, uh, and this, is, this would be the final value here. So if you have an object, you know, before all we talked about was the kinetic energy of translation, this guy, and the potential energy. Well now there's just one more guy to look at if the system happens to be rotating. Okay, so this is kind of important. Um, also 